All this Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He serves on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the Al Gore meeting. You have been vocal in your support for clean energy. What do you think, where do you think Mr. Trump is now on climate change and global warming, something that before he was elected, he called a hoax? I don't know. It'll be interesting. I mean, I think, you know, his latest statement was he thinks there's some role that humans have in that. You know, it depends what that is. So I think, you know, he's shown that he's willing to look at both sides of the issue. And, and you know, again, we've seen and, you know, there's there's and you see this, frankly, every time there's a presidential race, you have a candidate and then you have a president elect. And I think, you know, with with Donald Trump, he's had, in essence, the weight of the presidency on his shoulder. And it goes from, you know, running for an office and kind of having fun with it to all of a sudden realizing, man, I'm going to be president of the United States, a big deal, so i got to take these issues very seriously. But are you worried today, given your position, that he will try to blow up some global treaties that we're moving towards, you know, work on climate change? No, I think he's going to do the right thing. And, and you know, while I believe in the need to, to go after free energy, you also have to do it. Uh, not at the cost of the U.S. economy. So there's a, a fine line to walk there. And so I think you're going to see a Donald Trump look at this in a in a very respectful and a very understanding that he has an impact on the future of not just our country, but the world. And, and, uh, and you know, I'm going to give him a lot of space to figure that out. And I, I've been pretty impressed by what I've seen so far in since the beginning of the transition. Okay, let's talk about Dr. Ben Carson. Do you feel that he is qualified to be HUD secretary? I'm going to leave that to Donald Trump. I don't know a lot about Ben Carson except for as he ran in the presidency. Uh, he does come from a very amazing background, which is somebody that's really uh, lived in public housing, worked themselves through process, became a doctor, and uh, and has gone back and not just you know talked about being a doctor, but has talked to folks about you know his life and been a good leader. A lot of the times when it comes to leadership of these cabinet organizations. It's not as much about sitting at the desk and, you know, writing the next executive order or the next thing you have to do in the administration. It's about bringing people together and outlining a vision. So I think he'll do just fine at it. I think he's a great pick. Uh, but ultimately, that'll be to the Senate to confirm. I've been impressed so far with uh, the president-elect's choices, though. Does it worry you that Dr. Carson's business manager and close friend a couple of weeks ago, Armstrong Williams, said... This. Dr. Carson feels he has no government experience. He's no. never run a federal agency. The last thing he would want to do is take a position that could cripple the presidency. Yeah, it's a little ironic. And uh, I actually I thought when I heard that the first time, I actually said, why would you be out saying anything like that? Because you you never say what you never know is going to happen. So, uh, you know, I think that's probably a line that's going to come back to be uh, to be a little bit painful in this confirmation process. But I have no doubt that Ben Carson will be very able to handle this and I'll put the right people around him to make sure that that, you know, I mean, being a leader, it's all about putting people around you that make you look good and successful. Yeah. What do you think about the choice of General Michael Flynn? You know, that's the one choice I have a little bit of concern about. And uh, because, you know, I think there's been an expressed sympathy for Russia in that. And, uh, and and there's been some there's no doubt he's very good when it comes to talking about uh, the fact of terror and the fact about what we have to do to ISIS and, and destroying that that organization. Uh, but the Russia thing concerns me a little bit. But it's mitigated by the fact, however, uh, that Donald Trump has seemed to put people around him that understand, like Mad Dog, Mad Dog Mattis, that Russia is a, a big issue and one that we can't take lightly. So w Michael Flynn's position on Russia concerns you a little bit. What about these tweets, these um, tweets that go to conspiracy theories that he and his son have sent out from fake news sites. Does that worry you? It does. Uh, well, it, it worries me from his son's perspective. I don't know necessarily what Mike Flynn has or hasn't done related to that. Obviously, his son is putting out the, the conspiracies on this pizza restaurant. And it, and it is concerning. I mean, really, you look at it when people log on to Facebook or they log on to Twitter and they see an outrageous headline, and in many cases, instead of going to the second click and the third click to find out if in fact it's true or corroborate it somewhere else, it sears in your mind and that's something that stays with you. And you know, we saw this all through the campaign. It's just, you log on and there's some headline about you know, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton that's outrageous. That has to be tied down. And it's really incumbent on the end user, the person using Facebook, to find out if that story that sounds pretty outrageous actually is 
Nine times out of ten, if it sounds crazy, it, it usually is. Yes, that is a great rule of thumb to use, Congressman. Yeah. And so yeah. It, is, it is troubling. I mean, I hear what you're saying when people fall for these things. And what does it say? I mean, I'll just read to our viewers so that people understand what you're talking about in terms of his son. Um, Michael Flynn Jr. put out this. Until Pizzagate is proven to be false, it will remain a story. The left seems to forget Podesta emails and the many, quote, coincidences tied to it. There, he is talking here about a totally outrageous, easily debunked story of some child sex ring being operated out of a popular pizza joint in Washington, D.C. Not true. Not a shred of truth. Now, right. General Flynn himself retweeted um, two completely spurious uh claims about Hillary Clinton being connected to some sort of child sex ring. So does it show a level of gullibility or what? You know, I think it's part of that. I think it's just when you're in the middle of a campaign, you have this deep desire to discredit the opponent. And so you see something on the Internet, you feel like if you retweet it, you're not the one responsible because you didn't write it. You're just, in essence, retweeting out there for other people to see. When you get a government position, whether it's a U.S. congressman National Security Advisor or anything else, you now have a different level of uh, commitment to the truth that you have to hold on to because people are going to take your words and take them literally. I mean, things I've read about me, you know, in, in terms of involvement in the Middle East and things like that, you look at this and you're like, on the surface, it's utterly crazy, but some people believe it. Right. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, thanks so much. Great to have you on New Day. We're back with Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger as we wait to hear directly from the president-elect at a rally in Cincinnati, Ohio. Congressman, as you know, uh, President-elect Trump, he spoke by phone yesterday with Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. And according to the Pakistanis, uh, the Prime Minister's office, uh, Sharif's office, uh, Trump called Sharif, and I'm quoting him now, a terrific, a terrific guy and said he's ready and willing to play any role that you might want me to play. That was a tr according to a transcript the Pakistanis put out. Uh, he says they want to work together. You think that's all, all that kind of talk about Pakistan, which, as you know, has been pretty kind in recent years is appropriate? I don't know. I, I, no. And, uh, you know, I think I, I haven't seen the transcript. I've seen it reported, uh, obviously, here. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a little over the line to tell somebody, quote, I'll play whatever role you want me to play. Obviously, as the United States, uh, we're proud of the fact that we're the leader of the free world. We're proud of these alliances we have, but we're also in the driver's seat of most of these alliances, and we need to be uh, because of our values and systems. So I think if that actually was said, and again, you know, I don't have anything besides what I've just seen reported. Uh, if that was actually said, it was probably a, a bridge too far. But Again, Donald Trump's really new at this, and uh, and I think as you kind of get your sea legs under you, as you learn about diplomacy and everything, uh, maybe you get to ch maybe that changes, maybe that tone changes. Because as you know, previously Donald Trump has criticized Pakistan, accused it of harboring Osama bin Laden, collu colluding, if you will, with terrorist organizations. I guess here's the question: Was it a mistake for him to start out this new relationship? Uh, with the Pakistani Prime Minister, Prime Minister Sharif, uh, in th with this tone, did he get enough briefings going into that phone conversation? Now, again, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what he's been privy to, what he hasn't. Again, you know, international diplomacy is a, it's a learning process to learn how to do this. And unfortunately, he doesn't have much experience except in business dealings. And so this is a process for him. But, at the, you know, when it's all said and done, I don't think anybody should have any doubt but that Donald Trump will push back against Pakistan. He's been very clear about that. So in this case, you have a, a, a statement from a transcript that maybe was or wasn't said that I don't think necessarily shows, you know, how Donald Trump will be when it comes to being president of the United States on these very important issues. India, which of course has a very tense relationship with Pakistan, took uh, some serious offense to the characterization of that call. Uh, do you, I, I guess we don't know for sure, but do you believe there are enough people surrounding Donald Trump right now, giving him clear advice uh, on how to deal with these sensitive issues, Pakistan, India? Was this perhaps just a rookie mistake? 
It could be. Um, you know, I, again, there's a lot of information I don't know, but I, I think the team I've been seeing him assemble around him is actually really good at this. And, uh, you know, it's not the full team yet because he still has to announce Secretary of State, officially Secretary of Defense and some of these other positions. And so you'll begin to see that coalesce. But, you know, I think there's no doubt you don't want to say things like we'll play whatever role you want us to play. Uh, but I don't think that necessarily indicates that somehow we're going to be subservient to Pakistan. Uh, Congressman Adam Kinziger, uh, thanks so much for joining us. You bet, Wolf. Take care. All right, we're standing by once again for Donald Trump's uh, thank you rally. Uh, the first one of the post-election, uh, his post-election victory lap tour. We'll have live coverage.